Domestic violence is violent or abusive behaviour within a relationship. Every minute, police in the UK receive a domestic assistance call. We set up a public experiment to see how people react to domestic violence in both genders. How would you react if you saw domestic violence in public? Fuck is a fucking bastard. Hey, fuck is arguing. What the fuck? Speaking to sleep or? You fucking did. Fucking twat. I've just asked you what's up. Fucking sit down, dude. Fucking sit down now. Sit down. Um, well, I was very angry, but I didn't want to step in, just in case, like, made it worse. But if anything else would have happened, I would have stepped in. I agree. I would have stepped in if we were here. If we were there, escalators more to more than just physically grab them. Then I would have stepped in. The boy, because what? at the end of the day, it's a simple argument. That's how it seemed to start. But he actually would have just walked away. But he actually went to grab her. I don't really know, because could something could have happened, like, I don't know, a, a preliminary, like, argument. But, like, it's not, it might not be the boy's fault, if you get me, like, he might be insecure. Run a mile. <laughs> or hit out, I don't know. She wouldn't be with me much longer. <laughs> About two in five of all victims of domestic violence are men. British crime surveys show that men made up about 40% of domestic violence victims each year. Domestic abuse is often about power and control. The abuser will try to control their partner or another family member using a number of methods. Violence, mind games, verbal abuse, financial control, forced marriage, sexual violence or manipulation. I think the word um, cowards comes to mind because I think that people use it as a sort of an aggression. The use of intimidation to gain power in a relationship. I think it's uh, a coward act by the, the person who does it because I think in a, on a relationship, uh, violence, I think it's, it's a word that shouldn't, shouldn't be. I think of, of men attacking women and women not not reporting it and not doing enough about it. It's not just physical, it's emotional too. Uh, when you discuss uh, domestic violence, I obviously think it's something uh, within the home. It can be physical, it can be obviously um, verbal as well. It could be also with the idea of social media now these days. No, not really. And I also think that a lot of it's based around women. No, because um, if it's a male getting abused by a woman, you will not come forward and speak about it. Uh, I don't, I think that um, obviously it's perceived that it's usually a male um, um, against a female. I don't personally think there is enough awareness because on TV there's, there's not really that many adverts. In 90% of domestic violence incidents in family households, children were in the same or the next room. Domestic violence has a higher rate of repeat victimisation than any other crime. All names have been changed to protect privacy. At the start of the relationship, Simon was very loving and caring towards me. We were so happy in each other's company and it was so fun to be with. Say something I'm giving up. Constantly making me laugh, cute compliments, he made me feel great. And it was soon as, he, as we moved in together when the violence began, really. I was terrified and speechless at first. 
And then the first time it happened, I, I was like shocked. I wasn't feeling myself. It wasn't me. I'd never been made to feel like that before. But afterwards, he he apologised and was very sorry towards me. And me being the person that I am was like understanding, and I I accepted his apology straight away because I, I loved the guy. Like I I, he, I knew he was the one I wanted to be with. There was an incident when he'd been drinking since about four o'clock in the afternoon and I'd just come back from walking the dog and he instantly ran at me and slammed my head against the wall because I hadn't told him where I'd been. But thankfully the wall was plasterboard so it didn't really hurt as much. And there was also this time when we were both in the car and he was speeding quite fast, like faster than normal down the road. And I turned around to him and I was like, Simon, you're going to get us killed? You're going to kill us both? Slow down? And he totally turned around to me and was like, that's the intention. I, I just stopped and looked at him and I couldn't believe the words that just came out of his mouth. I was shocked. In the last two years of the relationship, it got really bad, it got worse. And there was this one time, he would, this was a regular thing, he would come at me and grip me around the throat, cutting off my oxygen supply, and it would actually make me faint. But this was his way of putting me to sleep, he called it putting me to sleep and this one time I'll never forget it will never part with me at all I thought this time it really was the end and um, we was in the kitchen and I walked in didn't say anything to him at all and he, we argued about something so ridiculous and all of a sudden he came out with me with a fork and he stabbed me in the face with the fork and at this point I fell to the ground pouring with blood. I was breathless, I couldn't breathe, I was speechless. I just had no reaction but cry, cry my eyes out. And I just thought to myself, it's, it's got to stop, this is the end. Is this really the end? It's an uncontrollable, uncontrollable feeling as well. And after watching me cry with pain on the floor, pouring blood, he just picked up his keys and stormed out the back door. And I knew this was the chance that I had to ring the police. I just had to do something about it. So I rang 999 and the ambulance came straight away. And I told, they took me in and stitched me off. And I knew at this point I needed to go to the police. I needed to put an end to it. So I went to the police and they was great about it. The put me into a refuge to keep me safe and I genuinely did feel so safe there and I think it was the best thing that I did in that situation and I advise anyone in this situation to go to the police as soon as possible, you can't let it get worse. For help or advice here are some contacts you could get in touch with. National Domestic Violence Helpline available 24 hours 0808 2000 247 Police 999. Men's Advice Line 0808 801 0327. Broken Rainbow for Lesbian, Gay, Bisexual and Transgender People 0800 999 5428.